the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't the way of the cross the way of every person's life? Doesn't every life have suffering, falls, hurts, rejections, condemnations, death, burial, and resurrection? It has been a Catholic tradition through the centuries to meditate on the way of the cross so that it becomes our way of life. Mary, the mother of Jesus, made that first way of the cross. These stations attempt to present that viewpoint in this book that we see through Mary's eyes what Jesus was going through on the way to Calvary. Then we try to make practical applications to our own lives. This booklet and these words are not the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is to go deeper and deeper into the sufferings of Christ so that we might come out of this spiritual journey with an appreciation of what Christ did for us and a deeper love for him and for our brothers and sisters.
I follow close behind my son as he stumbled toward Calvary. Nothing had ever hurt me more than to see him in such pain. I saw the cross digging into his shoulders. My heart dropped when I saw him fall face to the ground. The heavy cross landing squarely on his back. For a moment, I thought my beloved son was dead. Now, my whole body began to tremble. Then, the guards kicked him. He rose slowly and began to walk again. Yet, they still whipped him. I wanted to protect him with my own body. But I knew this had to be. So I walked on and wept silently. Don't let me remain my son, 
that we will have to be offered by the Lord, who always silently follow in the way. The sixth station. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As I continued close by Jesus, a woman pushed past the guards, took off her veil, and began to wipe my son's sweating, bloody face. The guards immediately pulled her back. Her face seemed to say, Why are you doing this to him? I knew, so I walked on in faith, silent. Lord, this morning gave me the best she could. On the other hand, I have wanted to take more than I can. So many opportunities arise every day. The ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because of the world, you the This fall of Jesus was agony to me. Not only had he fallen on the rocky ground again, but now he was almost at the top of the hill of crucifixion. 
The soldiers screamed at him and abused him, almost dragging him the last few steps. My heart pounded as I imagined what they would do to him next, but I knew this had to be, so I climbed the hill silently behind him. Jesus is taken from the cross. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The crowd had gone. The noise had stopped. I stood quietly with one of Jesus' friends and looked up at the dead body of our Savior, my son. Then two men took the body from the cross and placed it in my arms. A deep sorrow engulfed my being. Yet I also felt deep joy. Life had ended cruelly for my son, but it had also brought life to all of us. I knew this had to be, and I prayed silently. Lord, Lord, help us to see you. It is true of us all, whenever our chief sin is over you. I have done my part in the crucifixion, and now I say, I pray that forgiveness of all my heart. Help me to live the life. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because God has never lost, you have redeemed the world. We brought Jesus' body to a tomb, and I arranged it there myself, silently weeping, silently rejoicing. I took one more look at my loving son, and then walked out. They closed the tomb, and before I left, I thought, I knew this had to be. It had to be for you. I would wait in faith, silently. Yes, yes, Lord, Lord. this has to be because you love me, and for no other reason. All you ask is that I would live with God. You never said such a life would be. The 15th station, Jesus is raised from the dead. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because I heard the cross and the the world. I heard only the most great and sacrifice of my son for us. Yet what emptiness I felt trying to live without him, whom I loved so. But only two days later, that emptiness was filled beyond belief. He had risen. Our Savior had opened the doors to a new life. That is the way it had to be, because his undying love for you would not stop at anything less. I could rejoice forever, but not in silence. My Savior, thank you. Thank you for such endless love that helps me to rise out of my sin sinfulness. I will try again to live with the Lord. Help me to always remember that love. Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior, teach me to be like you, and my mother of our brothers, love me and return. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Amen. Amen. Since we have concluded this early, I have planned to do a bilingual mass in honor of St. Joseph, but we have time, and I have not done three masses today. So let us do a mass for you in English here, right now, following. I'm all set. David, if you would light those candles there and all of them. For me, while I put on my vestments, we will have the Mass of St. Joseph in English for all of those you, for you who are here.